All right. All right, what's up, guys? It has been a quite the busy week, and as luck would have it, quite a lot has happened this past week. It's actually been kind of crazy, uh, as I'm sure a lot of you have heard. Um, there is a lot of moving parts with the Rams as of right now, the biggest of which is regarding Matthew Stafford, our starting quarterback, and how he will be out uh, for this game against the Chiefs and how he may possibly be out longer. And uh, so we will get to that in a second. But just gonna, there has been a lot that happened. It's been a lot that happened, a lot of, a lot of news, a lot of releases, transactions, a few surprises. Though, if you think about it, not really that surprising. So we're gonna we're gonna kind of go a bit of a rapid fire here and just kind of go through some of the things that had happened. And the first thing I want to see, uh, talk about a little bit is Bryce Perkins, as the in the Rams, Bryce Perkins, who is our third quarterback, has is expected to get the first team reps this week. So, let's go ahead and get into this. And the Rams are preparing to be without Matthew Stafford and possibly John Wolford on Sunday as they visit the Kansas City Chiefs. Uh, so, Bryce Perkins, uh, due to the process of elimination, will be getting the first team reps. Okay, Stafford is being evaluated for a concussion and Wolford has a neck injury and that kept him out of Sunday's game against the Saints. So it would be Perkins at quarterback. This would be his first career start in the NFL if he is indeed called upon against the Chiefs. Um, will he start against the Chiefs? I do not know as of yet. Um, Wolford, Wolford's status is kind of up in the air. And depending upon uh, if he clears and how his neck is feeling, if he's ready to go, expect John Wolford to be the starter. Okay. I like Bryce Perkins a lot. Um, I liked some of what I saw Sunday. Um, but at this point, Wolford's just a better quarterback. Uh, one could argue Perkins might just need some reps, which I could see. Uh, I thought he made a lot of good plays with his legs against the Saints. And um, he really extended the play, which is something we desperately need as a team that is um, has a porous offensive line, for um, to put it quite lightly. So, someone who can extend the play is some is is what we need. But yeah, dude, Perkin, Perkins has to work on his throws, man, because his throws were awful. Okay, minus one or two throws here and there, his throws looked awful against the Saints. Okay, I'm not. Look, man, I understand. I understand it's his first game. He probably had the jitterbugs, but. You know, it's it's. I tell you what, if, if you want to win that second job, you got to get better at throwing the football. But if he started, uh, there's a part of me that almost, if he does start, you know, uh, expect a run heavy offense for sure against the Chiefs. Okay, and uh, you know, the Chiefs being as powerful as they are, I wouldn't expect, um, you know, I wouldn't expect too much. Because they are a great team and probably one of the better teams in the league. So it is not looking good for us at the moment. But really what we just need to figure out is who's going to who's gonna be manning the quarterback position. Because it ain't going to be Stafford. And Wolf, it's looking like Wolford might be out again. So, And it's a neck injury. Remember, he had that neck injury a few years ago in the, during the playoff game against Seattle. So if Perkins just... Be, just imagine you being the starter. Just think you're going to be the starter because there's a good chance he will be. And Sean went ahead and addressed the uh, situation here. Rams are expected to... Here, this is from Ian Rappaport. Rams are expected to give young uh, QB Bryce Perkins first team reps all week. Um, paving the way for a potential start given to injuries to Stafford and Wolford. This would be the first star for the former UDFA from Virginia. And let me tell you something. I love undrafted free agents. I love hearing these stories, okay? Undrafted free agents, okay, basically are dudes who just walk on the team, all right? And through 
through any kind of circumstance, they just got overlooked. They didn't get drafted. Okay. And I just love seeing someone who doesn't really have, no one really knows a whole lot about. They walk in and uh, contribute to the football team. Okay. Do you want to know who else was a UDFA? You want to take a guess? Kurt Warner. Kurt Warner was a UDFA. And guess what? He's in the Hall of Fame now. And he brought our Rams our first Super Bowl victory. So you never know, man. You never know. But I, I tell you what, you got to work on your throws. That's because Lord have mercy. I that did, did not look great. Did not look great. Perkins played relatively well in relief of Stafford last week, completing 5 of 10 passes for 64 yards with another 39 yards rushing. Didn't score a touchdown or turned the ball over and led two field goal drives. So I thought him extending the drives and holding on, keeping the Rams offense on the field probably was what he did the best on Sunday against the Saints. And I was pleased with that. Okay. He is quite the athlete, and he can make the best out of a bad situation. And honestly, like his, how he plays is almost kind of what we need with our offense because of our 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 O line just has been ravaged with injuries, and they cannot block to save their lives at this point in time. Though I will say, the lineup we had Sunday didn't do terribly compared to the other showings this year but unfortunately we have more injuries again and um, how they're going to shuffle the line for this week will be different yet again so that'll be 11 for 11 okay 11 11 different lineups for 11 different games that is some bullshit but such is life okay the Rams signed him Perkins as an undrafted free agent in 2020 he spent the last season on the active roster as the third quarterback and remained there this season as well. Sunday was his first regular season action. Sunday against the Saints was his first regular season action. So, we'll see. We'll see. We'll see what happens. We'll see how Wolford feels. If Wolford's healthy to go, it will be Wolford. But if I'm Bryce, my recommendation to Bryce is treat this every rep. Uh, take advantage of every rep. And basically just in your mind, you should expect to be the starter. Okay. That's what you, whether you are or not remains to be seen, but Bryce needs to go into these practices thinking he's the starter, spend some extra time with the receivers. If you need to, okay, you really got to work on your throws, man. They're a little high. Okay. Wolford two, Wolford two, but we're going to go ahead and move on. Okay, and the Rams signed a quarterback, Case Cookus, center Cole Toner, to the practice squad, squad, as well as center Cole Toner. <clears throat> and obviously, Stafford and Wolford have their injuries that they are dealing with, so um, it makes sense that they were to sign some guys on the practice squad. Um, hopefully, if the worst are. <laughs> is to happen yet again, which you never know, seeing how things are unfolding at the moment for this team. But Kokus is from Thousand Oaks, came to NFL. Let, let's talk about him for a second, because I have no idea who he is. Kokus, if I'm getting that right, uh, is from Thousand Oaks, came to the NFL as an undrafted free agent in 2020. He's been with the Giants, the Broncos, the Vikings, and the Raiders. He was last on an NFL roster August of 2021, uh, where he was cut by the Raiders uh, before the season began, so he did not make the cuts in training camp. And since then, he spent five days in the CFL and was recently drafted into... the Well, he w spent five days in the CFL with the Edmonton Elks, Okay, and was drafted uh, into the USFL by the Philadelphia Stars. Toner was a fifth-round pick by the Cardinals back in 2016. 
played 14 games in his NFL career. He was last with the... Oh, oh we're, we're here to the center. Okay. My bad, y'all. I kind of just went right into it. That is the quarterback, Cookus, all right? That is uh, basically he did some jumping around, much like uh, another Rams great, Kurt Warner, as I've said previously in this video. But, you know, it's he jumped around a little bit, jumped around the NFL a little bit, so he's just going to be uh, sitting on the practice squad if the worst is to happen. Uh, probably will not ever see him on the active roster. Now, to the center, Mr. Toner was a fifth-round pick by the Cardinals in 2016 and has played 14 games in his NFL career. He was last seen with the Texans in 2021 and started one game. Okay. So, there you go. We got a, got a few guys signed to the practice squad, which is makes sense considering all the craziness that's been happening to the Rams this season. Um, dude, I got to tell you, man, I, I haven't seen anything quite like this injury-wise. It's been uh, been pretty insane. So hopefully we don't get to see these guys at least this season. So welcome to the team. But we're going to go ahead and move on to uh, some news and releases that the Rams have done. Daryl Henderson has been claimed by the Jaguars after being weighed by the Rams. So, Daryl's in my neck of the woods now, here in Duval County, so welcome, Daryl. Let's go ahead and get into this. Uh, Daryl Henderson was waived on Tuesday, and uh, didn't take him long to find a home, was claimed by the Jaguars. And yes, the Jaguars do need a running back, so it makes sense that he was to come here. Though he probably won't be the starter. That, that belongs to ETN. Um, the Rams' decision to waive Henderson came as a surprise. Too many, uh, given the fact that despite the running back has become ga the running game being woeful this season, he's the team leader in rushing. Uh, with Cam Makers and Kyrene Williams putting together solid performances last week, uh, I guess the Rams feel comfortable releasing him. Henderson was selected in the third round of the 2019 draft. 70th overall, one pick after the Jaguars. He has accrued 2,216 scrimmage yards, 17 total touchdowns. In his three-plus seasons with the Rams, he's 25 years old. He joins ETN and Hasty, and is an unstricted free agent after 2023. In 2023, pardon me. And, uh, you know, there was a report that he, was, he wasn't feeling too good with his knee, and... Perhaps that played a role in this. You know, Daryl. I I've always liked Daryl, but he's just he's just always been he's just been battling injuries his whole time, and you know, and he's coming up on a contract soon. And him being released doesn't surprise me. Him being released right now um, didn't surprise me that much, but it did surprise me. And so, you know, it, it, the Rams could be in a situation where now they they kind of start they're starting to see that the season might they might be trying to prepare for next season. I do not want to call this a lost season. I do not want to say that. I don't because there is a lot to play for this season. All right, but as far as playing for a playoff spot, it it's looking like that ship has sailed. Though anything can happen, but it's not it's not 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 looking likely. So uh, with that, generally comes releases, and it's looking like Daryl is among the first cuts here. So good luck, Daryl. Welcome to Duval, and I certainly will be watching you come Sunday. You know, because the Jagu Jaguars are on the upswing. I'm telling y'all, Jaguars are on the upswing. All right, but let's move on. Uh, because our man Ashawn Robinson, defensive lineman, is out for the season with a torn meniscus. So that injury bug just What's that expression? What is that expression? When it rains it pours? Well, that's that's precisely what this is right here. LA Rams will be without defensive lineman Ashawn Robinson for the foreseeable future. Uh, he tore his meniscus and needs surgery, so he'll be out for the rest of the season. 
He started all 10 games, making 42 tackles, landing three hits on the quarterback, and uh, which was the most in his three seasons with L.A. And he may have played his last game because he will be a free agent in March. So, you know, it's, it's a situation where he has an injury and um, odds are good. I would love to have him back, but odds are good. I could see him not coming back uh, because, you know, the Rams are, you know, don't have a lot of money to spend or to sign. And uh, he's coming off an injury and he's good. You know, if, if he takes a team friendly deal, that'd be great. You know, it, it's a bummer because Ashawn was so pivotal to our Super Bowl run last year. And without him, I don't think our defense would have played as good as they did down the stretch. So I, I'm very, very appreciative of Ashawn Robinson. And, um, you know, he's played 35 games, made 24 starts, had 121 total tackles with two sacks. And I guess with him out, Marquise Copeland will probably replace him. Uh, we'll probably get to see some Bobby Brown, the third action. And, um, you know, we'll, we'll see how they perform. But, damn, man, this season is crazy right now. So, Sean out for the year. Rest up, man. Rest up. Thank you for your contrib contributions to the Super Bowl victory. Thank you. But we're going to move on. Uh, Justin Hollins is claimed by the Packers following the release from the Rams. So this is another uh, player that was waived. And Green Bay uh, picked him up. You know, uh, they got... Um, LaFleur. They got LaFleur over there. Good lord. My, I was blanking on the name, y'all. So they got the LaFleur over there. So they already have a, a relationship. So it doesn't surprise me that they picked him up because Hollins is a decent player. Not great, but decent. And he was a former fifth round pick in 2020. And he was mostly a backup edge defender. And, um,. He pretty much had, was uh, sharing reps with Terrell Lewis to replace Von Miller after Von Miller left. And, uh, you know, he had 26 tackles, one forced fumble, a fumble recovery, and a sack. And, uh, yeah, so didn't too, do, too, do too bad, but uh, this is what happens, man. We're going to start seeing people leave. But good luck to you, Mr. Hollins, in Green Bay. Hopefully you can help them out. And let's go ahead and get to uh, our boy, Matthew. All right, let's get to our boy, Matthew. Matthew is going to be out uh, against the Chiefs with a neck issue, and it's also in concussion protocol. Okay, Matthew Stafford will not play against the Chiefs on Sunday. Sean told reporters on Wednesday that Stafford is in the concussion protocol, and it's also dealing with a neck issue. Stafford took a hit on a sack in the third quarter against the Saints, told McVay that he felt some numbness in his legs, so the team opted to play it safe with the quarterback. Stafford was evaluated for a concussion earlier in the week and talked to the medical staff, ultimately landing in the concussion protocol. So, moving forward, McVay said the team will take it week by week with Stafford and put his health first. Uh, Wolford, status is up in the air because he is also dealing with a neck strain. And as we were talking about earlier, Perkins will get the first team reps and practice. So this is a this is a this is kind of crazy. We'll see what happens with Stafford, but he is definitely out for the Chiefs. Um, pretty concerning that he that he said he felt some numbness in his legs uh, after the sack after the sack in the third quarter. Of last week's game against the Saints, so that's uh, that's that that's that's pretty serious, man. So we gotta gotta just make sure that he's good to go. And there's a lot of rumors that Stafford, um, a lot of people are suggesting that Stafford should be shut down for the year, um, either depending upon how this how he checks out. Or just shut him down completely. 
And you know, man, I gotta personally, I'm gonna be honest, I don't know. I don't know yet. It's I need more information. Um, but you know, it's just one of those a neck issue is something you really don't want to play with. And if he's feeling numbness and if if it's if it's if there's any kind of hint that uh that he's losing feelings feeling in his legs, then you then shut him down. Shut him, well, I mean we're three and seven. It and it's 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 one of those things where some people would say like if you shut him down, then the players would give up uh because it would basically signal a lost season. I don't know that necessarily. And but but the thing is, like, if he can't go, he can't go. Like the neck issue is something you do not want to play with. And uh it's it's a little especially behind our O line. Our O line and look boys, it's nothing personal, but tr- they're playing terribly. Okay? That's about as nice as I can put it. They're playing terribly. And it really isn't all their fault because that, that position group as a whole has been ravaged by injuries to a level that I have never seen before. I have never seen anything like this in my years as a Rams fan, in my years as a football fan. And I've watched football pretty mu- mu- damn near my entire life for the mu- for for the most part, you know, started watching when I was a kid, so never seen anything quite like this. I do not know what the issue here, what's causing all this, but it's, it, I don't know, man. But uh, it's it's just the, the entire team has been ravaged by injuries, and it's a situation where if if we're getting hit so hard with uh, the injury bug, do you want to risk putting Stafford out there when we already have when we're already being ravaged by injuries and potentially cause something worse to happen? You know, I'm of the mo- <sighs> damn man, this is crazy, but you know we'll, we'll see. I-, I want to see how his tests uh, kind of progress if you will uh, pretty much McVay said they're going to be taking it a week by week so he's definitely out versus the Chiefs they're going to keep um, examining him but dude I- I'm, I'm going to be honest I'm going to be honest I'm starting to get this feeling I'm really starting to get this feeling that they're going to shut him down for the year I really do because there's something in because number one we're three and seven okay we're playing the Chiefs Kansas City Chiefs with Patrick Mahomes Um, you know, uh, if you guys are, you know, if you like to partake in a little bit, a little bit of betting, um, you know, if you're asking my opinion, my opinion to you would be to, uh, um, go with the chiefs because (laughs) I got to tell you, man, I think the chiefs are about to wipe the floor with us, man. It's, it's unfortunate, but you know, I have family members who are f- big fans of the Chiefs, and you know they're real excited. And um, you know, it's it, it's I don't think it's going to be pretty for us, unfortunately. I hate to say that, but the Chiefs are looking very strong this year, and it is things are not going well for us right now. So, you know, so you can chalk that up as pretty much three and eight, and pretty much will keep us out of the playoffs, unfortunately, and. Do you just want to keep putting Stafford at risk with that? So I do not know. Um, it's not a decision to be made lightly. Uh, don't make it right away. Sean, you know, sit on it, think on it for a little bit. Then kind of look at it week in, week out. But if I'm a betting man, I depending upon how is I need to know how the tests go, but I'm thinking they're probably going to shut him down. So, which is unfortunate. Which is unfortunate, you know, but if that happens, we'll get to see what we have in Wolford and Perkins. And, and Wolford's her too, man. This shit is crazy. But we'll see. We'll see, man. We'll see. It's just kind of a crazy time to be a Rams fan. But hey, we're still the Super Bowl champs. 
And my recommendation to y'all is just just enjoy it as much as you can. Because uh, it's looking like we are not going to be winning uh, another one this year in 2022. <laughs> so try to soak it up as much as you can before February. That's what I'm going to do. So. so as far as that goes, that's it. We'll continue to keep an eye on it and uh, see see where this whole thing goes, man. We'll see how this whole thing goes. Got a kind of crazy, but we'll see. We'll see y'all, all right? We'll see. But I'll catch y'all later, all right? And I will catch y'all on the next one. And as always, till the end of time, I will be a Rams fan. Till the end of time, right? No matter what happens. And as always, go Rams.